Investment advisory services offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, a SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, and Swan Capital are independent entities. What your money would say. Andrew and Rick Mayer. Money Talks. Money Talks. Are you listening? Are you listening? Money Talks. Are you listening? What your money would say with Andrew McNair. Good afternoon. Welcome to What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And for the next 30 minutes every week, Saturday from 1230 to 1 o'clock here on WCOA, I will be your retirement resource. My goal, my passion with Swan Capital and what your money would say is to pull back the curtain on retirement and remove the mystery about retirement planning. Now, I am very excited about today's theme. Um, We had to bring it back. You know, last show we talked about veterans benefits and Social Security benefits. And today we're going to dig a little bit deeper into Social Security benefits after listeners and clients said, hey, Andrew, could you answer some more of our questions on the air? So I was happy to bring it back. Now, before we bring on our subject matter expert, which is John Sullivan, used to be the past district director of Social Security and was in the Pensacola office for 15 plus years. So you're going to hear an inside scoop from him. But before we do that, I want to share with you some upcoming events that we have here at the Veteran Benefit Project and Swan Capital. Now, my nonprofit, the Veteran Benefit Project, has a couple workshops coming up. One is at Berry Hill Manor, and that's next week, where we're going to share with families at that assisted living and a lot of uh, visitors that are interested in home health care, how they can earn up to $24,000 a year from the VA to help pay for assisted living and home health care expenses for wartime veterans and their spouses. Um, Also, we have a Social Security Benefits Class 101 at UWF. If you'd like some more information or want to see what the tuition is, I think it's about $35. It's coming up in July and check out swan-capital.com under the upcoming events tab and you'll learn more information about that event. Now, as always, check out our swan-capital.com while you're there and sign up for the weekly newsletter uh, where you can get some straightforward financial updates. Now, as I told you, today's theme is about Social Security benefits. It's a very complicated topic. Everyone knows about it, but not everyone knows what to do. Do you take it at 62? Do you take it at 66? Or do you wait till 70? Um, and it's a very important topic to get right because the stakes are high. And as I always tell you in retirement planning, the stakes are high. That's why you want to work with a specialist, not just a general practitioner. This decision in your life is irrevocable. You can't pull a mulligan. You can't do a do-over. After 12 months, it's set in stone. So we want to make sure that we do it right the first time. Now, I'm going to share with you some example clients. Um, I'm going to start off with Joe and Mary. They're both age 66. Joe is receiving $1,800 from Social Security, and Mary is receiving $1,100 from Social Security. Um, And if your numbers sound less or more, um, just get the concept here. But I want to get across to you that these benefits, if it's $600 or $1,200, is a lot of money over your lifetime. If you take Joe and Mary's benefits and times that by 20 years, that's $696,000 of benefits they're going to receive from Social Security. Now, if we can maximize that, maybe squeeze out an extra $50,000 over their lifetime, would that be of interest to you? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And how we do that is by maximizing benefits using claiming strategies. A claiming strategy is analyzing the rules of Social Security and combining and postponing benefits so we can maximize and leverage those benefits. And the foundation of that, we're going to start off with what's called a spousal benefit. And you have to understand that before you can understand uh, the claiming strategies. A spousal benefit is based on 50% of the other spouse's primary insurance amount, or PIA. And that's basically what you're going to receive at age 66, uh, for layman terms. As the spouse of an insured worker, you are eligible to receive spouse insurance benefits if you meet the conditions below. And that's what I'm going to read off to you. Your spouse has filed the retirement benefits. You're not receiving a benefit based on primary insurance amount, which equals or exceeds one half of your spouse's primary insurance amount. You have filed an application for spousal benefits. 
and you are over age 62. So if you meet all those, you can be eligible for spousal benefits. And the claiming rules before and after full retirement age differ. So there's two ways to look at it, before age 62 or at 66 and after full retirement age. So the rules differ. Now, if you're before full retirement age, you don't, many, you don't have very many options. A claim for either a spousal or retirement benefit is deemed claim for both, which in other words means if before your full retirement age, you cannot choose which benefit to collect. You automatically get the highest. Now, at 66 or after the full retirement age, you can choose to file for both benefits or restrict the application for either spousal or retirement benefits. So you always remember, when you reach full retirement age, you have more options, and you can choose when to collect. So the claiming strategies that I'm going to highlight today, again, I'm just going to highlight these claiming strategies. Every situation is different. Joe at the water cooler that's telling you that he's going to do it at age 62 might not make the most sense for you. Or your neighbor that says, I'm going to wait till age 70 because I heard that I get an 8% increase every year. Again, your situation may be different. You have to look at longevity. You have to look at how much assets you have. There's a lot of things you have to think about. That's why it takes a plan and a strategy. And that's what we do at Swan Capital. We sit down and have a free consultation with clients and, and families and determine how we can optimize and leverage their Social Security benefits so that Joe and Mary don't only receive 696000 they receive more than that. But those claiming strategies is the first and one is the file and suspend. That's probably the most well-known. It's where one earner can file for benefits and immediately suspend the payment. And generally, the higher earner files and suspends, but sometimes the optimal strategy involves the, the lesser earner to do it as well. So file and suspend, remember that. The second one is a file a restrict application for only spousal benefits, also called restricting the scope of the application. So what that does is we collect spousal benefits while the other benefits accrue with delayed retirement credits. Now, this last one I'm going to share with you is voluntary suspend. This is where we start benefits early at age 62, and if we realize it was a mistake and we want to, at age, 65, age 66, we want to suspend it, we can do that, and we can delay those retirement credits so at age 70 we get a larger check. Okay, again, as I told you, this is a complicated topic, and I wanted to bring in a subject a matter expert on the topic. Who I'm going to bring in today, um, he's a good friend of mine. His name is John Sullivan. He's the CEO of Social Security Benefit Solutions and also the past district director of Social Security. John, will you share with us your background from Social Security? I started with Social Security back in 1972, so I've been around for a while as far as Social Security goes. I started with Social Security in Tampa as, believe it or not, in the, as a mail clerk. From the bottom floor in the mail room and then uh, moved myself up um, until I finally retired as the district manager here in Pensacola, Florida. And the different jobs I've had in Social Security go from um, supervisor to staff assistant to working with disability, working with the uh, attorneys and stuff that we have. So it's been a, a really wide variety of uh, positions I've had and uh, very, very interesting. Now today's show, I wanted to focus more on the retirees. Um, now as the retirees get closer and closer to the Social Security age. They have a lot of options. And we were talking about how we're living longer and longer times, and so this has become a more and more of an important decision because we need to maximize these Social Security benefits. Absolutely. Uh, when Social Security was first started, uh, they were letting you retire at age 62, but your life expectancy was 60. So <laughs> they were hedging their bets a lot then. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, they still let you retire at 62, but you're living to 75, 80, 85 years of age. So in the past, Social Security would tell you, take your money and run. That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, in fact, by policy, Social Security will not give you any advice whatsoever. Uh, in the past, they would say, well, you could retire here. This would be to your advantage. This wouldn't be to your advantage. Now, they just ask you, when do you want to retire? We're not giving you any opinions. Or they don't want to be a liability. Right. I'm sure they lost the lawsuit somewhere because they gave some advice sure. to pan out. So there's a lot of different options you can have. And basically, there's three points in your life that you can look at. is age 62, age 66, which is full retirement age now, and then age 70. And all the different options you have depends upon at what age you actually retire. 
And which it changed over time. Full retirement age changed over time. Change, uh, full retirement age used to be in the year 2000, used to be age 65. Mm -hmm. Now today it's age 66 and it is going up to age 67. Slowly bumping it up. And then any time you take your benefits before age, um, your full retirement age, which is 66 this year, your benefits are permanently reduced on that record. So if you took them at 62, you're going to have a 25% reduction in your benefit, which may or may not be to your advantage. You, know, you may be continuing to work and not want to draw your benefits. So there's a lot of different options you can do with Social Security. And the rates of return at the present time are much better than rates of return in the market, especially in a low interest environment like we're in. You know, when you can wait and every year is 8%, that's, that's a a lot of good earnings. Now, there's a lot of common questions I get from clients and their families. One of the biggest one is, will Social Security even be there for me? Yeah, and I've always been asked that in the 40 years I've been with Social Security, and I can really honestly say, yes, it will be. Okay, and the reason for it is is several. Is one, as long as we can tax the American public, you'll always see Social. And <laughs> death and taxes, right? We're not going to avoid those. Absolutely, and they tax you more and more every year. A lot of times, people don't even know what's happening, but it is. Well, it's like Medicare, you don't even see the 10490 that comes out of your check. Right, absolutely. And and we charge you uh, when you first earn FICA, they take out Medicare. Then they when you um, start drawing your Social Security, you start paying taxes on your Social Security, so they taxed you twice. And then Medicare, which they call a premium, but it's just another form of tax. <laughs> so they're taxing you three times in the same amount of money. Triple taxation. Absolutely. And uh, But there's a lot of um, benefits out there. So with Social Security taxing it triple times, what are some other options Social Security can continue to be funded? Well, Social Security, first of all, decreases benefits almost yearly. At one time, students used to get benefits till they were 22. Now it stops at 18 or 19 if you're still in high school. They used to that lump sum death payment, that 255. Anybody used to be able to get it uh, as long as you accepted the responsibility for the funeral. Well, now the only people that can get it are widows, widows living with, and children under the age of 18. Otherwise, that benefit's never paid in. So they, they change the benefits around quite a bit. And they pass it while no one's looking on C-SPAN. They pa Absolutely. They, pa they pass laws usually two times. One, in an election year, it's usually six months before the election or less because the American public has an attention span of less than six months. Or if it's a non-election year, they'll pass it around Christmas time because nobody's paying attention. And they get the laws passed, and then it hits them in January when they least expect it. They got it down to a science. They really do. And as far as, you know, Social Security continuing, even in the year, they, they say Social Security is going to go broke, and that's never true because Social Security is a pay-as-you-go system. They won't, they'll run out of reserves and run out of the interest on the reserves uh, in the year 2033 now, they're expected to. Before then, what they can do to adjust it is they can means test it, which they've already done with Medicare. Most people don't even realize that. And they've also done it with your pay stub because it used to be FICA. Now it's FICA Medicare. So they means tested the Medicare part of FICA. Which just means if you're rich, you're not going to be able to get it or get a reduced benefit. Right. Which is so commonplace. Now it's the Robin Hood mentality, you know, take from the rich, give to the poor because they need it more. Right. The only thing that you always have to watch out for is who decides who's going to be rich. You know, President Clinton said $200,000. President Obama says 250000 We tax, or I keep saying we because they've been with Social Security so long. Um, <laughs> Social Security taxes people that make more than $25,000. So for that example, you're rich if you make twenty five. dollars That's not even over the poverty line right there. Uh, exactly. So, you know, as far as Social Security goes, it'll always be around because in the year 2033, it'll still be taking in and paying out $2.5 trillion a year. And the other way they can save Social Security is do absolutely nothing. I know that sounds strange, but if they do absolutely nothing in the year 2033, they'll still be able to pay 75 cents on the dollar. And here's another thing is they may continue raising the retirement age. Since we're living so much longer, who's to say they won't say the minimum age is 70, 72, and slowly bump it up? And they can do the same thing with Medicare, too. Right now it's 65. It's always been 65, but there's no law that says it has to be 65. Now, if you're listening and you're saying, well, um, John and Andrew, I'm getting close to retirement. Uh, when should I take Social Security? You know, of those three times, when should I? I know this is going to sound terrible, but it all depends. It depends if, if you're working at 62 and you don't need the money, don't take it. Because every year you wait past 62 to 66, you're increasing your benefit amount by anywhere from 5 to 6% per year. Now, once you hit 66, between 66 and 70, if you don't take your benefit, you're increasing your benefit amount by 8% per year. And that's a lot of percentages. Absolutely. And so 
if you're working, they, Social Security has what they call an annual retirement test where they allow you to make $14,140. And everything over that, $2 over that, they withhold one back from your benefits until your benefits are exhausted. So if you have like a $60,000 job or a $40,000 job, chances are you're not going to get much benefits. So it would be in your favor to wait. Now, once you hit 66, you have several other options. If you retire at 62 and you file, you have to apply for everything. There's no choice, okay, on any record that you can possibly be eligible on. But when you get to 66, you can choose what record you want to be on. So if you wanted to hold yours back because, you know, you're making some decent interest on it, you could draw off your spouse's record and get half of whatever your spouse was getting. Hold your record back to get those 8% per year interest rates. So it's more than just applying at a certain age. There's so much more that goes into it. Nothing simple anymore. It used to be simple 40 years ago when I started with Social Security, <laughs> but it's nothing simple anymore. And that's why I always tell everybody that you need to look and probably get advice. Nothing simple anymore. I mean, when if I want to know about Social Security, I can talk about it. But if I need financial advice, I need to go to somebody who's trained in that area. So I always tell everybody, go and see what your personal situation is. Don't rely on your neighbor or anything like that. Right, because Joe at the water cooler has different set of incomes, a lot of different factors, that it might not be the exact same decision for you than it is for him. And in fact, most of the time, it's not the same decision, okay? And so I always tell everybody, you might have another stream of income that is only paying you 2%. Well, you might want to say, well, I'll stay away from my Social Security because I'm getting aid on that and use the stream of income that's only giving me 2%. So I'm still making more money that way because that's what it's all about. If you can take the emotion out of Social Security, because that's a very emotional subject to people, right, if you can just look at it as a stream of income, your life would be so much easier. Now, if you're just tuning in, we have John Sullivan from the Social Security Benefit Solutions, who used to be the district manager for the local Social Security office. And we're talking about some really common questions for retirees, like will Social Security be there for me? When should I take Social Security? The next question I want to ask you, John, is how do you actually determine the benefit? What does Social Security look like to come up with your annual figure? Social Security is very clever at this, okay? What they do is they take your highest 35 years between 1951 and the year you turn 62. And so the more years you have in an average, the lower your average is going to be. <laughs> Law of average is working against you. That's right. And so they use your highest 35 years. Then once you're past age 62, they look at the, that year you're 63 and is that year higher than one of the years they use to compute your benefit amount. More complex, they don't use what you actually made. They use what they call real year dollars. So if you made in 1951, you made $1,000, that's actually worth 12,500 today. If they use that in your computation and you worked, let's say, and made $20,000, they would take that 12,500 and pull it out of your computation, put in the 20,000 and recompute your benefits. But let's say that you uh, work at Tom Thumb and you uh, only made $10,000 that year. Well, at that point, they wouldn't take the $12,000 out because the $10,000 is lower than the 12,000 and there would be no recomputations at all. And they continually do that as long as you continue to work. Now, one of the things I always tell everybody that if you are drawing Social Security benefits, that process that I just described takes about 18 months. If you want your money faster, you just take your W-2 down to the Social Security office. They'll kill me for saying this. Uh, yeah, you take it down to the Social Security office and say, please recompute my benefit. And three weeks later, they'll recompute your benefit. But if everybody did that, they'd be doing nothing but recomputing benefits all the time. But, you know, that way you don't have to wait the 18 months and get your benefit right away. Again, it's, it's way more complicated than just averaging 35 years of uh, your, your service uh, at work. And um, again, John's right, it's complicated. And if you're thinking, when should I take Social Security? Is Social Security going to be there for me? And those are some concerns for your financial plan. Here at Swan Capital, that's swan-capital.com, you can schedule a consult where we'll look at your personal situation and determine what is the best time to take Social Security. John, I want to talk about maximizing benefits. These benefits are a lot of times a good portion of people's retirement income. We want to make sure we maximize them as much as we can. One of the options you hear tossed around is called file and suspend. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Well, you can, you can have your benefits suspended. Uh, they did a loophole last year. They closed it. What people were doing uh, when they passed a new law you could take your benefits until you reached age 66 or until you reached age 70 and you could keep collecting your benefits and then at age 70 turn all that money back to Social Security 
because sometimes people aren't sure how long they're going to live, so they were hedging their bet. And you just keep throwing the benefits and, and sock it away in the bank and draw interest off the government's money. Then turn the money back in and refile. They close that loophole that says if you don't do that within the first year that you filed, you're not permitted to do that anymore. So they've, they've stopped that one. Uh, a lot of people, if you go down and file and then you say, well, I've decided I don't think I, I need my benefits right now, you can have your benefits suspended. You don't need to actually withdraw your claim, especially if you didn't get any money, you can have your benefits suspended. It all depends upon whether or not you are actually drawing a check. If you've never drawn a check, it's like nothing's ever happened. Okay. But once you start drawing the check, then it's like something did happen and you might have to adjust it. Just like with Medicare. Uh, at age 65, people will say, well, I'm working, I'm covered by a group health plan, I don't need Medicare. Well, Part A is for free, so you might as well get it. You don't have to you know, pay for it, so it's, it's a free item, so get it. But on um, Part B, which is the doctor bills, if you're working covered by a group health plan, you don't need that. And you get a special enrollment period, so you're not penalized, because as a general rule, anytime you wait past your 65th birthday to get Part B of Medicare, they raise your premium by 10% per year. So it, it particularly comes into effect when you have um, people that are on TRICARE. Even though TRICARE will tell you you don't have to file for Part B of Medicare, if you don't, you lose TRICARE. So in my opinion, you need to file for Part B of Medicare. And a lot of military people don't know that. And that's at any age. You know, if you're eligible because you're disabled, you need Part B of Medicare if it's offered to you. There's another uh, way to maximize benefits. Is it similar, the file and spend, is it similar to filing a restricted application? Yes, uh, what can happen at age 62, if you file, you're filing for everything that you can possibly get. At age 66, you have choices. So you can say, okay, I'm going to not file on my record, but I'm gonna file on my spouse's record, and I'll get half of my spouse's benefit, hold mine off until I'm age 70, because after age 70, there's no point in waiting. Um, and then get that 8% per year that we were talking about earlier. Now, with widows, or widowers, they can take their benefit as early as age 60. And now when it comes to age 62, if they want to switch over to their own, they can, but they have an option where everybody else doesn't. Where if they file at 62, they file for everything, widows can pick and choose. And so a lot of times widows will hold their widower's benefits or widow's benefits until age 66 or until age 70 to get their maximize their benefits. That's very creative. Do you think a lot of widows out there know about that? Absolutely not. Uh, one of the things that, that we worry about is that uh, at, at Social Security Benefit Solutions is that do you know your benefits right? Because you have to trust the federal government. And that's one of the things we actually do is if we're here to help. This right. is their famous line. If you think we are if if you think their benefits are wrong, come to us, we'll compute the benefit for you and tell you if it's correct or not. Nothing simple anymore. It truly isn't. And, and that's why it takes experts like meeting with John Sullivan over there at Social Security Benefit Solutions or meeting with uh, me, Andrew McNair, at Swan Capital, because we'll sit down with you and look at your personal situation. What your money would say. Today's financial landscape can be rough. One of the most important aspects of planning is choosing the right guide to help you navigate the road to retirement. Andrew McNair and the team at Swan Capital is dedicated to providing the very best service in the retirement planning industry today. Swan Capital is a full-service independent wealth management firm dedicated to providing guaranteed custom income plans that you cannot outlive. Contact Andrew McNair at Swan Capital, 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. The difference between Swan Capital and you? You retire once. We help people retire every day. You should be enjoying your retirement years, not letting worry keep you up at night. Swan Capital. Sleep well at night. Contact Andrew McNair at Swan Capital, 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. Again, that's 850-380-9558. The Veteran Benefit Project, founded by Andrew McNair, president of Swan Capital, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans and widows of veterans with long-term care expenses by qualifying for the VA's aid and attendance benefit. Learn how to receive over $24,000 per year from the VA 
towards long-term health care. There is absolutely no fee associated with our assistance to the veteran, the widow of a veteran, their families, or any retirement community. Our goal is to preserve the dignity of the veteran and to reduce the dependency on the Medicaid system. Again, learn how to receive over $24,000 per year from the VA. Contact the Veteran Benefit Project, 850-380-5137. That's 850-380-5137. 850-380-5137. 5137. Look us up on the web, veteranbenefitproject.com. At the Veteran Benefit Project, we are committed to helping you secure the benefits you deserve. Retirement expert Andrew McNair, changing the retirement paradigm. Now back to what your money would say. Brought to you by Swan Capital. Welcome back to the show. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with John Sullivan, the past district uh, manager at Social Security Administration Office and the CEO of Bene- uh, Social Security Benefit Solutions. Um, as you heard it from John, the people at Social Security cannot, by, by policy, give you any advice on what you should do for Social Security. Should you take it at 62? Should you take it at 66? Should you file and suspend? They can't share with you that. So where do you go for help? Well, that's what we do at Swan Capital. We sit down with families, and we help optimize their Social Security benefits. As we talked about Joe and Mary before John um, Sullivan came on, we talked about Joe and Mary, who had $1,800 in Social Security and $1,100. And they were going to get $696,000 of benefits over their lifetime. But what happens if we could squeeze out $50,000 more, like I shared with you and I teased you before the interview came on? Here's a better option for them. If each begins their own benefit at age 66, which as we know, that's a lifetime cumulative of about 696000 here's a better option. At age 66, Joe files and suspends his benefit. Then at age 66, Mary is eligible for her own benefit of $1,100 or a spousal benefit of $900. She gets a choice. She can claim only the spouse, spousal now at 900 and at the age 70, switched to her own benefit, which has grown to th- by 32% from $1,100 to $1,452. And then Joe claims that at age 70, when it has grown to 2376 That lifetime cumulative is $778,000. That's $82,000 more that they were able to withdraw from Social Security. And as a retiree, you've paid into Social Security. I don't want to make sure that you get every dollar that you put into it and then some. So if you're looking to see how you can maximize your Social Security benefits, there's two ways you can get in contact with us. The first is going to our Social Security benefit class at UWF. The tuition is $35, and we're going to go in-depth for two classes on what can make the most sense for retirees when selecting the decision on, on Social Security. The second way is coming into Swan Capital and have an in cons- uh, in-house consultation. And what we do there is we share with families what our firm is about. We share with you how Social Security works. And we- then we look at your situation to determine a custom plan to help you optimize your Social Security benefits. If that sounds of interest to you, give us a call at 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. And if you're looking to find out more information about our Social Security Benefit Class 101 at UWF, check out swan-capital.com and look under the Get Get Educated tab. Then under the Upcoming Events tab, you'll see all of our events. Also, I want to share with you and let you know that next week's show, we're going to bring on uh, Mayor Ashton Hayward, and we're going to talk about, as a retiree, is Pensacola still the place to retire? We have a lot of retirees move here. And nobody's really from Pensacola. We're all transplants to some extent. But is it still the place to retire? Many families are retiring abroad, but I still think my bet is on Pensacola. And we're going to find out why that is. So looking forward to seeing you next week. And as always, you can give us a call in the station at 478-3116. I look forward to seeing your call and seeing you on next week's show. See you then.
Kickstart your weekday mornings with Don Parker and Jim Sanborn. I wake up to it every morning. On News Talk 1370 WCOA, Pennsylvania.